Okay, everyone. Today, second opening, second volume of the robots and programming course. Okay. So, yes, we have a lot of stuff going on here. <laughs> so, let's get to this. Um, second volume opening. Here we go. So, we're going to have to mount this automated motor driven robot. Um, it's going to be cool, which we sort of will just like um, show you little bits of the mounting and then go to the final product. Um, right now, we are going to start with the magazine, okay, which will be a standard thing so that we can just like talk a bit out of the whole subject. Um, so we have this right here. We're going to have to mount this. It's called gymnastic robots okay so this is supposed to be like a gymnastic and it's going to do some round round stuff <laughs> and it talks about a bunch of other stuff so let's get to it um so what does it talk about so much energy um witchcraft or science at the time there was already ancient automatic uh, autonomous like um, moving structures as we talked in the first volume um, it will get into a bit of that as well um, the first remote controlled airplane um, talks about sustainable energy talks about how a robot works okay um then we have a then we have a challenge to do on the programming parts just like on the last one and um instructions how to mount our robots so witchcraft or science comes a long way ago so this is what they used to think like uh, because on those times they used to make these like autonomous structures to move they used to change it into like legends and witchcraft and supernatural uh, stuff that in fact this was just normal structures moving mechanical parts um, <clears throat> and they used to like make up stories and everything else just like uh, this elephant um, that had like a structure on top of it and it used to move had moving parts. So whoever saw this at the time used to think it was like some magical doing. And it wasn't. It was just normal mechanical science engineering. Um, then, past a long time, started to come the first uh, mechanical robots with springs. Okay. So that you didn't have something to move it. You could just like charge a spring with tension and it would just move on its own. On those days, they didn't have that yet. Um, but here, yeah, it's really fast-forwarding. So, um, for example, to show you what uh, we're talking about, for example, this right here. This is like uh, the first autonomous moving um, parts we used to have in those times. So here, we just have to give tension to a spring. Okay, just like that. And... It will take movement, okay? So that was already like fast forwarding everything. Before we had the the engines, which the first one was um, steam by steam, first engines. Um, they we just used to use inertia to make parts move. This was mostly for toys. Uh, you couldn't make machines moving out of this for us. <laughs> it wouldn't be practical. <laughs> But you have clocks, for example. Um, the big improvement in clocks was because of springs. And as you can see here, it actually shows us the whole mechanism. So we have a spring, uh, we have the gears, we have pulleys, and we just give movement to all this through tension, okay? So it's converting, like in the first volume, the uh, tension of the springs will convert into movements, okay? So that energy converts into movements. Um, then we can go a bit forward. 
Leonardo da Vinci. He also made this um, medieval statue, soldier, soldier suit, uh, to move with gears and pulleys, as you can see. Um, I don't think it had springs at the time. There was no springs. It was only gears. So um, something would have to move. the. If you move the arm, something else would also move at the same time, you see. Yes. So um, if someone was giving movement to one part of the of the of the structure, the rest would also move on through the through the conversion of movement through the gears and pulleys. Okay, so um, it's fascinating to see how this all evolved until the days of today. It started to, for with like simple basic stuff that people used to uh, overdo it and think it was magic or witchery, and it wasn't. And then Leonardo da Vinci bringing up this and explaining the science behind it, the engineering. It's not quite the science, but more the engineering about it. Um, and then uh, we get to these um, spring action wind up moving toys, okay, and figures. Uh, the radio frequency invention, okay, signal, where by radio frequency we could emit a signal to get all these motors and moving parts, okay, drive strains, to move in a certain direction, okay, so it's giving signal an order, so that there can be then a following action, um, so this was the first uh, remote control airplane, it talks a bit about the story, um, so it even says here yeah, the story, this Reginald Denny was an actor in the First World War, and he was um, fascinated by modeling um airplanes and and that kind of um um for modeling airplanes and everything else that he was a uh, fictionator for and uh, he didn't have engines for them so he asked for he made like a competition whoever would help him to create them and the winner was an engineer walter writer and um Together they made the first Denny plane, a radio plane, called OQ-2. So, quite interesting. So, practically during the Second World War, radio frequency was, um, was um, created and developed. Okay, they worked a lot of it during the Second World War. Of course, after the Second World War, then it just gave like a big boom until the days of today. Um, radio plane could go already above 300 meters from the ground. Uh, actual drones now can go 19,812 meters. So it's a big step, but still for the time it was quite amazing. Um, it had 84 centimeters height, 2 meters 65 uh, length, and uh, wing to wing 373. So it wasn't a small airplane, it was like a big drone, uh, weighed 47 kilos and it reached a speed of 137 kilometers per hour, could go on battery for one hour, okay, 304 meters high altitude, so quite interesting, yes. Um, so actually at this radio plane factory that then they made in 1945, see, so that was like the end of Second World War already, was working a Norma Jean Mortensen, which um, then became to be the famous Marilyn Monroe. So, that's so interesting. <laughs> um, you couldn't be very poor to make up productions like this in factories, so. Always had to be someone with money to back them up, you know. <laughs> it's just like nowadays. <laughs> you might have the idea, but then you need the money. Uh, so here it talks about renewable energy, green energy, and non-renewable energy. Uh, like coal, uh, petrol, gas. That's not renewable. We're just burning um, substance to get to produce energy. And then we have renewable energy like windmills. Water dams, so, um, geothermic energy, okay, from the magma heat under the near the ground, solar energy, um, oh, and also 
nuclear. Uh, nuclear okay energy um which is a non renewable energy because we're just um burning it out and then it gives a yeah, lot of waste exactly. and these are solar panels you see um so each solar panel okay as you can see each solar panel has um an inverter okay so each one has to have a control box and now i'm going to show you the other inverter in the garage which is to balance okay the voltage of each phase okay so each panel of these is uh, 280 watts as you can see okay so it actually comes out like voltage max 31.6 volts it variates a little bit although it says max i haven't measured it um but that was also on the data sheet so um yes then we gotta invert this and this is how solar panels work so the sun will hit the panel up these tiny little cells um, they get charged up and they will flow according to the circuits of the panel um, and creates a DC current and that's why if we come here uh, it actually should say here DC but it doesn't but we know it's DC okay and that's why we got to convert then the DC voltage so yes quite simple but um, now they even have stronger panels instead of 280 watts now they actually got the 450 watts if I'm not mistaken so if I wanted to add another three it should be the same as having these six um, that's what I'm thinking of doing adding another three and pass this onto the garage top right here which is cement uh, I don't want to put more weight on the structure but yes so uh, 6 280 and now you could have just 3 450 will give you more or less the same um, power in watts so let's go check out the, the other system beautiful cars <laughs> um, so yes um, solar panels then bring the cable down into this little circuit board right here goes into the four pole circuit breaker okay um, as you can see um, because they connected two by two so we're putting two on each face we are getting uh, f almost here 300 watts now the clouds are a bit on top of it just now it was 400 watts from each pair of uh, two panels in each phase you see um, this is the current that they're consuming um, that is applying and here we go this is the voltage we get from each one so this is a three phase system um, so once it comes into the circuit breaker we have this reader right here and also to control uh, the phases is this system right here and from this we get an output okay this is feeded by 220 so that's why if we switch off the electricity we don't have a power supply for the house that's why we need a battery with the battery then if this all goes off the battery will be supplying this and the house so this also consumes very little 25 milliamp um, so this doesn't consume a lot from here we get the output 400 uh, volts into our main circuit board uh, right here where then this will supply the the rest of the, the whole house and the headquarters everything okay um, so that's how it works and then here you can see all your measurements this is the line input for this to work so if you want to be autonomous and just um, if you have no electricity you really need batteries or else it just won't work um, that's how it works guys let's keep on moving on um, then next it talks about um, circuits okay and um, here we got a battery and two lamp bulbs okay showing that we can storage energy to produce uh, electric currents uh, induction into the lamp bulbs and produce lights 
which is also another way of energy from the heat of the filament see so this is just to show how electricity transported from a, a storage okay or direct supply transformation into um, the source for example solar panels which you don't need batteries and it will give you energy to supply the house and the grid yeah. or you can have a battery to storage it when Some of it. the grid goes down and you can still have electricity at home okay. and you always need a switch okay <laughs> and uh, here we have an experience about the lemons to show how this all works um, for example use some lemons to make energy to light up a bulb in this case LED okay um, which we're going to give light to this LED with the help of the lemons okay so we have here a, a power supply and first we're going to connect it with a power supply okay um, DC this is a 30 volts DC power supply um, and we're going to see how much voltage we need to um, switch on this LED bulb okay as you can see there you go off and on okay now we are applying 1.8 volts mm -hmm. to this LED okay now we have five lemons just like in the drawing here okay in the drawing it shows that we have five screws one screw in zinc, each zinc lemon plated. zinc plated zinc plate. and a and copper, copper coin okay yes, copper. in each lemon as well okay. and that's what we just uh, replicated right here we have the coins we have instead of screws we using these hooks that are just like a screw but hooks so that we can put the the crocodile terminals easier um and we have one two three four five in okay coins and screws one in each lemon because five fresh picked lemons from our garden <laughs> we positive and we have copper. positive on the copper negative on the zinc and negative on the screw zinc zinc hooks okay, okay. as you can see and now we are going to connect it to the led and there you go now you should be asking like what's the voltage coming out of that so yeah. we have a multimeter right here okay and we are going to yes measure the voltage we, measure we have from the circuit. lemons we've got 4.89 yes let me get here the so we have 4.89 volts open circuit. open circuit without the led being on. on charge okay if it's on if we charge that voltage onto the led we have 0.7 okay yeah. now it's stable and now we have 1.7 13 volts okay dc from the lemons <laughs> yes and our led is, is on. on okay so quite amazing from the lemons we just connect one of these 220 power yeah, supply onto switching this on so we get 1.8 volts output okay yeah let's connect with lemons we get 1.7 one, one, one lemon, one lemon. One lemon. It switches off it switches off see okay if you put less lemons you'll have less voltage the lesser uh, lemons we we have the, the less gonna be. voltage we have yeah. the weaker it is the weaker so the we followed the magazine because they might have made this test already and actually yes it does switch on this led quite uh, well 1.7 volts that's not bad that's half a normal battery yeah no a normal battery. battery is 1.5 yes one battery and of course so you get stronger one ones with three volts yeah. uh, but yes look at that guys i think if they were riper it would probably be a bit better right a bit green they're a bit green the year. so we still try to get the yellow ones yeah, but we no got it <laughs> but they're good lemons eh? <laughs> They are good lemons. Okay, so lemon experience done. <laughs> Let's move on. Um, but quite interesting, I guess. Amazing. So, robots. Five essential parts. We have the main central units. Okay. 
So I call the brain of the robots. Um, then we have the structure of the robots. Then we have the actuator, which are arms, legs, uh, the motor, which is the most important of all for movement. Um, just like the LED lights, speakers, uh, screens. Uh, and then we have the energy, okay, which can be all those type of energies that we talked before, okay. If it's renewable, even better. <laughs> but not always is the fact. Um, but nowadays, we got a lot more based on the electric um, energy. So, yes, much better. And sensors. So we have sensors, energy, main units, structure, and actuators. Five main parts that make a robot. And then we pass to our gymnastic robot, which we will start. Okie dokie. So yes, let's pass to it. Uh, in one, two, three, go. Okay, so now we are going to start mounting the the new little robot and um, for that okay uh, you've been looking at the instructions we are going to need parts from the first one okay so here's the first one as you guys remember you can go see the previous video special playlist just for the robotic and programming course and yes now we're going to take this out of this bag I got these cool bags to keep them see and uh, we're going to use the parts of this so that we can mount the one of the second volume. Okay, let's go. Okay, so as you can see, we have um, we have already put all the parts together that we need. Okay, they're all over here. So this is all we're going to need to mount the second automated robot toy. And um, yes, as you can see, we've took a lot of parts out of the first one. <laughs> and uh, now we're going to start mounting it all up, okay? So let's go. Okay, so we've already gone this far. Um, we have our motor. See the same rubber band? I actually had to take more parts out because uh, I needed four of these from the previous um, volume robot. So, yes, now we're going to continue. We are almost there. Eight, step number eight. We have nine, ten. Yep. Okay. Almost there. Yes. <laughs> and, yes, finally done, everyone. We got our robot gymnastic. Um, it didn't say in the manual instructions to use the the face of the last one but i decided to put the looks like a cat's head <laughs> so as you've seen previously all the instructions are on the websites that i showed you previously on the first volume um first video we did okay so you do all this until you get to here the only thing that missing now is putting the power supply on um and we can see here the video of how it will act as you can see here there you go okay so with the motor the gymnastic robots will go round and round in two different speeds okay let's get our one to move now um here we go so now we're just going to connect our wire um, red for positive, black for negative, and now we are going to follow the symbols that are here, positive, negative. So we're going to use number one over here. So as you can see, this is already prepared for the future volumes, uh, the future videos of this course that we're going to do. It really has um, several of outputs. Uh, it's going, that means it's going to be used for several th different things, okay? Um, and we still have this one right here. So yes. There's much more coming, so don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can always stay tuned for every week release. Okie dokie, so red positive, black negative, and we are going to insert this in our power supply. This takes two AA batteries, okay? 
um, and this uh, electrical motor right here, DC, okay, it's like three volts. So we could we would need ten lemons, about ten lemons to get to get this motor running. That's not bad, but we don't want to waste more lemons. <laughs> we only have uh, three have. trees, <laughs> yes. And right now we don't have ten They're ripe green, lemons. Too They're too green. <laughs> okay, so um, let's switch this on. So we'll go one speed. Look at that, everyone. Look at him going. So we're transferring the motor movement through this elastic band, okay, onto this other wheel that just makes the whole robot gymnastic move. And we can actually have two speeds because now we can go for the one speed is using one battery, 1.5 volts, and the second one, because it's in series, it's using then two batteries, will make the motor go even faster. You can make it go so fast until it just burns up because there's always a limit to what you can burn on voltage. So it will be three voltage in one, two, three, go. And there you go, look at him, it's just going crazy. <laughs> okay. So yes, quite cool explanation um, to show us how energy turns into movements and storage energy this time. Last video, we talked about just using the rubber band yep. as the elastic kinetic energy with no electronic okay. supply, okay? Electric supply. This time we stored energy using batteries to make this motor move so that we can have a quicker movement, okay? And continuous movement until, of course, the energy goes low. And we can pass from one battery to two, and we just the higher the power supply, the higher the speed. With lemons, it would be the same thing. Lemons are our batteries, okay? They have stored uh, electrolytes uh, ions, okay? That then will give us the, the um, electric currents we need so we can put the LED uh, bulb on, which right now is off. We can switch it on again. See how cool is that? And the funny thing is that if you keep this on, the lights will be a bit weaker. If you switch it off, it restores the the, the electrolytes um, ions again, and it becomes stronger when right after we switch it on. See, yeah. so yes, quite cool. So there you go. Now let's pass to the next step, which will be. The programming where we have to put this little guy to talk, okay, and make a conversation. So let's get to it. Oh, another thing I forgot. Um, because this motor is built for it and it's a DC motor, we can change the polarity of the motor, which will also invert the the move the the rotation of the gymnastic robot. Okay. For example, right now we have the correct positive with positive, negative with negative. If we invert, which you cannot do on every appliance you have, remember, only do this if it's specifically built for it, okay? Because there are a lot of electronic components that can be burnt if you do this. So this is just for this. And if you are sure you can do it on whatever you're building, um, then just go for it. So we invert the polarity and it turns the other way so instead of coming forwards it's going backwards okay um, and you can do this with a switch which this is a switch but this is just to go on and off you can have a switch instead of removing the plug where you can also invert the polarity okay and there you go quite amazing um, for example with this LED it will only go on if we have it on the correct position. If I change polarity, it will stay off. It will not go on. Okay, so new programming project. So here it says we have to go to looks. So it is the purple one. Although this one looks like purple, but it's pink. <laughs> 
these look very similar, but here yeah, looks purple. Um, and this is Buddha block that says hello for two seconds. Okay. Um, and now another block that says hello. So let's go to hello. Okay. Now we need um, think for two seconds. So remember, you can alter everything that's in here. If you press here, you can write whatever you want. Um, yes, it's repeated. Hello. And then say hello. And then think for two seconds. And then think again. Okay, this is the first like challenge that's on the magazine. Um, and now we have to go to the run mode button okay so for the run mode button we have to go to i think it was control or events yes yeah it goes into run mode okay okay so if we press on the green flag it says hello mm -hmm. for two seconds mm -hmm. For two seconds and then it goes mm, again okay so that's just to show that it's working um, and now it says here that we have to create a new friend okay um, we can put already the writing say I'm Keddy uh, I love blah 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 <laughs> um, but I think that is too simple so we'll just go right to the next one where we create another um, another figure and we can get them both talking to each other I think it's easy like that okay dokey so I already put all these input buttons okay um, but um, I think I'm going to do the rest so all I'm doing is I'm going to looks and choosing these ones Oops. and I'm going to control and choosing these ones okay uh, in the previous video, you can see that um, each option here gives you a different control. So we just follow in the magazine, okay? Um, and now I'm just going to do the other ones and then I'll explain the whole thing or else it will take too long to video the whole thing. <laughs> okay, so we got all our buttons here. Um, so I'm following the, the magazine and um, following all the, the button sequence, okay? Um, it does say that you can do your own avatar and you can indeed You can actually draw your own avatar If you click this button right here um, You can actually draw your own you want to see let me just save this one um, To save it save it because then you lose it and then you have to do it all again. So save now and if you go here and You press paint here you can reproduce your own avatar, okay? Um, I don't know about making it move. Um, then we'll have to see on the next volumes how the... Because you can give it sound, you can do so many things, but we're going volume by volume. But there is option sounds, if you just want to go into it, there's sound. Um, so basically... You see, here it's just giving the sound of the pop-up, um, which is quite cool, actually. So, um, yes, so I just decided to put some sound here as well. <laughs> now, that's for future volumes. I'm sure the sound. The only thing it tells us is about conversation. Um, but because the sound control is right there, um, I just decided to put a, a little sound because it just stays cool, you know. It does talk about uh, changing the direction over here. So to face him the other way, put him minus 90. Um, because he is facing the opposite side. So let's try here. Minus 90. Um, okay, it wasn't the cats. I'm sorry. Cats was fine. Katie was fine. The robot needs to be changed. 
Okay, minus 90. Where does it say minus 90 and it's just 100? Right. Uh, let's see here. Now we got to invert it. Yep, so 90 is fine. What we want to do is change his direction uh, here. Okay, there you go. Okay, so yes, it does say here to press on the inverse. Okay. Uh, flip it yes there you go we just flip it minus 90 okay just like that there you go okie dokie yes that's it I think you can just position them like that okay so um, we just follow the instructions over here and we build all our blocks so what you can do is just like on the first volume you choose your blocks, okay, of looks. So first you go to event. When flag is pressed, that's what's the first button we put. And then we put the control, which is waits a certain amount of seconds, okay. Play the sound. And then we go to looks. This time it's not motion. Last video it was motion. This time it's only looks. Looks is conversation. Um, we have then sensing. Uh, operators, uh, variables, and my blocks, okay? So, yes, so today it's just about looks, events, controls, and sound. So, here it said, you click on the control button, a look, two look buttons, another control, look, control, look, okay? Um, event, look, control. The only one that's different from the instruction manual is the sound that I decided to boot in. I wasn't going to, but I just thought it to be cool. So, when click the green flag, wait 6 seconds, because the first one's going to be talking as a robot. So, the robots, when I click the green flag, it's going to beep. It's going to wait 1 second, and it's going to say, hello, okay? Um, it's going to say I am robot and then you have to put a waiting on it how long you want it to say I am robot for then you got to put a wait button okay a timing button so that it gives time for the cat to talk right after for example the robot says plays a sound then he says hello I am robot he's got to wait five seconds so that the cat is also waiting for him to say all that. Then the cat can go meow, say hi, I am Keddy. He will wait five seconds. The robot will go welcome to the Daily Life Projects channel. He will wait three seconds, and the cat will say so happy to be on the channel. The robot will wait three seconds. Pleasure to meet you, Keddy. The cat will say nice meeting you too. So you had to play around with the seconds, okay? Um, just like in complicated programming, it's the same. You create blocks. What we're doing is each line is a block, okay? And it's a command. So let's see how it stayed. Hello. I am Robot. Hi, I'm Kitty. Welcome to the Daily Life Project channel. So happy to be on the channel. Pleasure to meet you. Nice meeting you too. And there you go, everyone. So, um, if you notice, on the last post where he says, Welcome to the Daily Life Project channel, he done four seconds, then he waits three. So that gives seven. The cat here is waiting 5. So we would have to increase 1 second on here. Just so that he can wait for the interaction of the robot. Let's do it again.
you see now that one went on top of that one so then you got to go back to the robots and instead of the robots wait for three you boot four seconds so if you increase on one you're gonna to have to increase on the other you see I'll let that mistake just to show you guys now it should go well So he still needed a bit longer, but the cat is waiting a bit too much for when it says, um, he says, welcome to the Daylight Project, four seconds, plus four gives eight. He's waiting for six. Uh, it could be a bit earlier. Let's try it out. But I think we have to give one more second over here. And when he says, welcome to the Daylight Project channel. Three, we can boot here. Five. Let's see how this works now. I think it's going to work out now. It takes a bit of time to do programming always. Okay, okay, so um still wasn't quite there, so uh now I changed here on the robots this wait for five point four point five seconds, sorry. Um here we got four seconds, four seconds, and here two, and now over here we also have four point seconds over here. So that's the same as the robot just here the cat has three seconds okay so you have to play around a bit with the time um it's not easy um <laughs> okay because i'm very picky and i wanted to do this see it's more like synchronizing huh Okay, now I'm happy. So you can actually even... That's cool. <laughs> you can actually even put them uh, apart from one another. Let's just stop it here. Just put, put them a further apart so that you can see the bubble. Let's see how it goes. <laughs> That's quite cool. See, I want a time on this one so you can read the whole sentence quite big. Yes, got it. Fantastic. Oh, yeah, that's it. <laughs> okay, I got it right this time, everyone. That takes a bit of time, you know, um, to synchronize the whole thing. That's cool, made my own animation um programming conversation see between two avatars <laughs> so yes you can go to this website sign up i'm sure it will help the creators um and uh just play around with this whole thing you know it's very cool a lot of fun um takes you a bit out of the routine of daily life and um i'm enjoying it a lot i'm normally used to do more the programming for for work, you know, PLCs and everything else, and uh, robotic systems, but this type of like uh, animation, I've never done it before, so I'm enjoying it a lot. So that's why you have to stay tuned, everyone. <laughs> Let's go. So this is program, everyone. Hope you all enjoyed it. Stay tuned, subscribe, like, and comment, and see you all on the next one. And I'm out.